Hey guys, it's Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be drawing this guy. Alright everyone, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Sketch Soup. Um, today I will be talking about mistakes and letting mistakes happen. And it's something that I was thinking about when I was doing this drawing because I messed up on the original sketch, if you can see on the video. But I think it's an important lesson that anyone can learn, not just artists. And while I'm sketching, I will be including the tools that I'm using, as I've been doing with previous episodes. So they will be listed on the bottom left corner. And just a quick reminder before we dive into the topic, this photo that I'm drawing from is the result from a Instagram voting poll that I posted on a story. So if you guys recall, a few days ago I posted an image showing two Instagram profiles that I had my followers choose who I should draw. So thank you all again for participating in that. And I hope I can do some of those in the future. Uh, it's a really fun fun thing, I think, to involve your following. Um, so this will be an image of Yasutaro, Yasutaro, if I'm saying that correctly. And I'll link his Instagram in the description below, so you can check it out and give him a follow. But yeah, mistakes. So mistakes, something we all do, and for the most part we don't like making them as it sort of shows, shows our weaknesses and flaws. And it's something that I've struggled a lot with, especially with my art. And I'm more, <laughs> I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist, but I like to showcase my work that's good, or what I deem good on my website or anywhere online that I post. And I think a lot of people don't realize that there are many crappy drawings or things that we don't like to show. And I'm sure that the artists that you follow on Instagram or any social media, I'm pretty sure many of them are also showing the good stuff and not really showing the bad stuff. So what you'll see in this video is a lot of erasing or readjusting certain parts of the picture because it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't really, it didn't really capture the likeness of the picture I was drawing from. And because of that, I will refrain from posting the picture, the actual reference picture, but I will link the Instagram profile that I took the picture from. So if you want to try searching for it and do a side-by-side -side comparison, that is definitely up to you. <laughs> so when I make mistakes, I tend to erase them quite a bit and correct it until it looks correct. But I think in most cases it can be useful to let a mistake to just happen. Because when you let it happen, it'll give you sort of a track a track record of where you started and where you are now. And it helps seeing the improvement, and I think it's a great way of documenting your growth. And I think for a lot of, the, for the most part, when you're showcasing your best work and not really showing the bad work, it's sort of hard to relate to, it's, it's harder for other artists to relate to you because they only see what's good and don't really know the mistakes or trials that led, led up to that drawing. So I think giving an insight on your process and even, you know, your trial and errors, I think showing those to your audience is something that will help them connect with you more. And as cliche as it sounds, but things do happen for a reason, even if they are mistakes. You know, if we were always perfect 
in doing the things that we do, then there would be no joy in learning. So something that I like to do, and I think is a good practice for any visual artist, is when you do create something that's not perfect, you don't necessarily have to show it to someone or anyone, but I would definitely keep the keep the drawing or whatever it is for yourself because you know later on you can look back at it and see where you went wrong and you can take note of how you can improve it it'll be a good pointer for what you can study upon and you know how you can better execute in the next trial so keep those don't throw them away and getting back to the drawing on screen i Really, I really messed up on, you know, measuring things out as I was drawing proportion-wise, and I, you probably noticed, but I erased his, his right shoulder, or deltoid, uh, a numerous amount of times, and as you'll see, I'll, I'll even um, rework his, his eyes quite a bit, and t in the end, it's. <laughs> nowhere near in likeness and it's actually I'm actually quite embarrassed of this drawing but I thought it would be a good one to show to you guys just so you can see that not everything is perfect and it's okay to make a mistake here and there um, make as many mistakes as you need to really what I should do is redo the drawing again and you know apply the things that I learned or try to capture the likeness in the second round, but I typically do those in separate studies. Uh, the main purpose of this drawing was just to involve the Instagram community. So there are a few tips that I can share when making mistakes. Tip number one, let the mistake happen. Mull over it if you need to. The more you try to make it perfect, the more you're hurting yourself in progressing. So let the mistake happen. Tip number two, observe the mistake and see where you can improve on. Take notes if you need to. Tip number three, Put that into practice. So whatever you took note of, put into practice, whether it's through a study or applying that lesson through a drawing from imagination. And I think one thing you can pair that with is repetition. So basically keep drawing that one thing you're having trouble with until you understand how it works. And lastly, tip number four, share your mistakes. So I know earlier I said that you don't have to show your artwork that you screwed up on, but if you do want to improve and you want some feedback from a fresh pair of eyes, definitely share your work with the community. They can provide feedback as to where you can work on if you don't know what to do on how to solve the issue. Sometimes finding a community is tricky and especially one that will help you improve on your work. So a few places where you can start is conceptart.org through the sketchbook forums. That's where I started when I started getting serious about my artwork in 2009. And another resource is artstation.com and there's also a small forum website called sketchlab.org which is a replacement for the previous website called permanoobs.org. And I really want to emphasize sketchlab.org because the guy who ran the original website of permanoobs is a Magic the Gathering illustrator by the name of Johannes Voss, and he also started out on conceptart.org. So he created a really 
close-knit community on permanoobs.org, which is really heavily focused on improving artwork. So I would su highly suggest looking at that website. Um, and I'll provide the links on the, in the description. The last resource I would choose is Instagram because most Instagram is mainly image sharing. And if you're trying to get feedback on Instagram, it's quite hard because a lot of people just comment on images, not really giving feedback, unless maybe you, you make a post uh, intentionally seeking for feedback. But I would say Instagram is the last resort for finding a community that's focused on improving their artwork. Now that the drawing is almost complete, I'm just touching up with final details. I'm adding the petals that I overuse quite a bit in a lot of my drawings. Um, and here I'm, I'm showing a, a smaller uh, lead pencil that I use. It's a 0.3 millimeter, I believe. And it's nice for getting finer lines. And I am also correcting the anatomy of the drawing, which I should have done quite early on before I jumped into rendering. And that's a mistake that I repeat a lot of, so I think that's something that I really need to work on myself is to get a good foundation drawing. Here I'm using my favorite tool, which is the dagger brush, and I use it a lot to blend my markings. Before I would use to hatch everything until I got the values with just pure hatching. The way I came about using the dagger brush was just to find a quicker way to get gradients of value. So I don't see it as cheating, but more as a shortcut. As long as you have the knowledge behind what you're doing, I think it's fine. And I think everyone kind of seeks their own different tools that they utilize. Okay, so the drawing is complete, and as I watch over the footage of this capture, I can point out a lot of things that I can fix. And I think one thing that really got me was the face, because I didn't get the likeness quite exact. And I think that's a good prompt for me to do more studies of the facial planes. So I guess I will have to correct that mistake for the future, do more studies, and definitely draw more faces, probably get back to more basics. But I want to thank you all again for tuning in for this episode, and definitely stopping by the channel. So be sure to like this video, subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date, and definitely follow me on the Instagram. I will see you all in the next one.